The one million dollar questions in cardiology remains, however, if the dog is in congestive heart failure or not, because many of the treatment recommendations are based on the presence of congestive heart failure or not. The diagnosis of congestive heart failure, which means abnormal accumulation of fluid in the organs with left-sided congestive heart failure in the pulmonary parenchyma, might be very hard to diagnose. However, if appropriate treatment is installed, we see, will see that the fluid infiltrate, like here with the interstitial edema, will disappear with appropriate treatment. A dog can be as well in left-sided as in right-sided congestive heart failure, and many will experience both in their lifetime once cardiac disease develops. If we look at left-sided congestive heart failure, the first feature we are thinking of is that there must be increased pressure in the left atrium. So we will be looking for left atrial enlargement in these typical places. On the top of that, the pulmonary venous return to that left atrium must be decreased and therefore we will see signs of pulmonary venous congestion, most often visible cranial to the heart shadow. Once the pulmonary venous congestion is so severe, fluid will leak into the interstitial space and we will get in the first instance interstitial pulmonary edema. Luckily for the veterinarian, the dog has a fairly pathognomonic place where interstitial edema will develop, mainly in the perihala area. This area is not always clearly visible because of the superimposition of the left atrium at the same place in the lateral radiograph and therefore it's absolutely essential to look as well at the dorsal ventral radiograph where we can have a look at the pulmonary parenchyma completely separated from the left atrial silhouette. Once the interstitium is filled with pulmonary edema, the alveolar space will also be filled and we will see signs of alveolar pulmonary edema with an alveolar pattern. Very often we can see the first signs of this in the right caudal lung lobe. When left-sided heart failure progresses to right-sided heart congestive heart failure or with just right-sided congestive heart failure on its own, we will be looking at the size of the caudal vena cava, the direction of the caudal vena cava as explained earlier, and of course the presence of free fluid in the thoracic cavity, pleural effusion, and or ascites in the abdomen. Hepatomegaly is also a frequent feature of right-sided congestive heart failure, although splenomegaly is fairly rare in animals in right-sided congestive heart failure.